All right, welcome to the Robert Show. I'm your host, Robert Jain, and today we are super excited because we have uh, someone special joining us, Ronan Squats, uh, CEO of K2 View, a leader in data and AI. We'll be discussing how to get your data chain AI ready, grounding large language models with real time enterprise data using retrieval augmented generation uh, frameworks. We'll also explore key elements like data privacy, scalability, and future of AI-driven insights. Uh, so let's dive in. I'm going to bring up Ronan without any further ado, and let's do it. Ronan, welcome to The Rabbit Show. Such a pleasure to host you today on The Rabbit Show, and super excited to chat about so many different things. You've been a fantastic leader in the data and AI world, uh, so happy to chat a lot about Gen AI, LLMs, uh, K2View, uh, and much more. Arvid, it's great to uh, to be joining you. I'm a big fan, and I'm glad to uh, to be part of this excitement. Uh, data, data and AI is uh, really happening and happening right now, bringing um, massive change to the market. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. That's awesome. Uh, the excitement is equal, Ronan. And uh, just for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us more about k 2 View. Obviously, I know k 2 View since I've been following you guys since a while, and I've seen all the amazing work that uh, k 2 View and team has done in this space. So would love to learn a little about you and k 2 View. Excellent. So my name is Ronan Schwartz, and I've been a, a leader in the data integration, data management, data cataloging, data infrastructure worked for uh, in leadership role for companies like Informatica, uh, like NetApp, uh, really been there in the beginning of the iPaaS, the beginning of uh, cloud storage and so on. Um, let me actually uh, share a little bit about K2 View. So uh, some people know K2 as this like famous mountain that is just here above me. It's A, one of the prettiest mountains that you can do. It's also one of the hardest to reach to the peak. And the k 2 view goal is really to enable data to be a product and really tackle this complex task and make it as simple as possible and bring as much value just as the view from the, from the top of the mountain. So really what k 2 view does is create data products that enable you to have real-time 360 view of the business, whether it is customers or product or anything else. And, uh, um, if data products have been key and important uh, for, I think, definitely more than a decade, I think now with AI and Gen AI, how data can augment uh, this new massive opportunity is putting it even more in the in the center. Um, mm. Maybe one last sentence on K two View. Uh, K two View has been delivering this value very very successfully to to customers. It really data products are available within a relatively short time, no more than a few weeks. And we've been doing it in massive scale with companies like AT&T and Sign Life and Verizon, region banks, key banks, and many, many others. Yeah, no, I think uh, that's a fantastic uh, uh, background and thanks for sharing the details. Obviously, uh, great work. As I said, uh, I've seen the data products. Uh, uh, at K2 View, and obviously, great names out there uh, ATT, Sun Life, Verizon, uh, Region Bank, and Key Bank are huge. Uh, so, you're catering to the enterprise companies out there, which is amazing. Uh, I'm kind of also curious to learn about what's your connection to data and Gen AI. How, how do you look at it? And uh, kind of curious to learn a little about that as well. So obviously, Gen AI is is changing uh, a lot of things, and it's actually bringing a massive opportunity. Making mm -hmm. the data ready for Gen AI is really, really critical to to get the value uh, from Gen AI, and especially for enterprises. How to take the data from their the backend applications, from the CRM and the ERP, um, the the customer service. How to bring information from Salesforce and SAP and ServiceNow and Atlassian. How to bring the information from the database where really the information is um, um, the enterprise key information, key systems of records are holding this information is critical to bring the value. Now, some companies, LLM definitely have a huge amount of knowledge in it, 
some companies have already started to focus, especially with RAG, uh, Retrieval Augmented Generator, to be able to bring uh, documents and really proprietary information of the enterprise to the LLM. K um, K2View is really focusing also on bringing the structured data, the data inside the application, where the most critical information of the enterprise is, and really power the LLM with that data. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty interesting in terms of how you're all catering to the GNI and the RAG. I've been listening and I've been, you know, talking to so many leaders in this space. Do you also get that question a lot uh, from enterprises? And I'm pretty sure you might be getting that question about, oh, how do we start with AI, about GNI? How do we get into, you know, what is RAG? Tell us more about it. How do we get ready for uh, GNI and RAG specific uh, activities? Uh, do you get that question often as well, Ronin? Definitely, and and I think there are there are two questions. I think the first, the, there one question is how do I start with Gen AI? You're so excited on a personal level. You 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 start to use and and get the value from it. And how do you bring it into the the enterprise? And how do you really are making sure that you're doing it successfully in a secured way? Because the enterprise data is also something that is very, very sensitive, the customer information, how to make sure that this is all secured and protected as you are bringing this value is really a critical a critical part. Um, the second question that I hear a lot is, how do I make the LLM answers grounded and personalized? Um, there is really a lot of, uh, um, a lot of premise in the technology, but there's also a concern, are my answers grounded? Are they actually connected to the reality and the, on the, and the basically the, the environment that surrounds, the, that's, that the enterprise is living in? So this is definitely another, another question um, that, that, that I, uh, this is definitely another question that I hear a lot. Mm, okay, that's awesome, and thanks for sharing that. those details, uh, Ronin, definitely something pretty interesting for our audience. So what do you think? Is Gen AI really changing the world? Uh, since everyone's kind of talking about it, uh, I'm kind of curious to learn from you. Yeah, so, so I, I, you know, for me, the best example to tell you that it is changing the world is if I'm looking into my, my personal life. So we're just coming out of the summer vacation and yeah. uh, in the summer vacation, I don't know how many trips you took, but I'm in charge of my family and sometimes setting up the itinerary. Oh, and wow. I'm going to try and do something uh, something brave, even braver than setting the family itinerary, which is a risky thing <laughs> of its own. Um, let me try and see if I can I can show you a little bit of a of a demo, of, and I'll start actually with just telling you how did I plan my my last uh, my last trip. Um, I would love to see that, and I'm pretty sure our audience would love to see that as well. Let's uh, let's uh, do a trip a uh, trip itinerary here with Ronin, so it's going to be interesting. <laughs> I'll, I'll get yes. some tips how to, what types of prompts do we need for drip itinerary and how does it all work? Let's let's look at it much more in depth. All right, your screen is now up, uh, Ronin, so show us So more in the past, that. one of the things that I would do when going into a trip is I will start typing, uh, which is what should um, I, in Venice in a weekend, right? And right. what you can see here, and unfortunately there is some sponsored links and so on, I'll usually start to run into uh, um, either the picture um, that shows you some of the beautiful places in Venice, but more likely right. I'm gonna basically start opening a few of these websites and then start browsing through the different, uh, uh, the different options. And then I will create an Excel sheet so that it's all organized. I'll try to measure the distance between the different places that I'm actually visiting and come with an itinerary. And, right. uh, um, you know, I, I have uh, three kids, so it will also have to be adjusted to what the kids would like to do. Exactly. But this summer, exactly. that's not what I did. After many, many years of following this best practice, this is not what I did this summer. This yes, summer, I, I went I into... Yeah, I think that is something what everyone does as well. This is what most of the people usually do where uh, even if you ask me, I would go and type in and then see what are the places, even look at the pictures. Okay, leaving the sponsored part apart. Uh, but yeah, that's like the general practice. But now let's see what you did this summer. 
So, so instead of just basically browsing through the website, reading to it, printing a few pages and kind of summarizing, I went in, yeah. into ChatGPT and, and really typed the same, um, the same question. But when you're talking to ChatGPT, you actually have an opportunity to do something that is even, even better. Instead of basically asking about what should I see in Venice, I can actually say, uh, help me with an itinerary. Oh, if I can spell it right. Okay. Venice yeah. for a weekend. And uh, for a weekend, right. and I can even say with kids. Okay. And what you see here is actually pretty amazing, which is I don't need to do the calculation to look into the mapping and do a few other things. I basically can very, very quickly see a full itinerary. And I continue, and I can continue and then further uh, um, adjust it. I can give the kids ages, their preference, what it is that they like to do. I can do all of that very, very quickly. Right. Um, so this is a, this is really, really a, exciting. It saves a lot of time um, for me, and I will testify firsthand. It also increased the quality of the trip. The trip was better. Yeah. The ChatGPT did a marvelous, uh, a marvelous job. You can see actually even a few, a few tips, tips in here. But a two days itinerary that would take me a few hours to create done in a, in a second. So and I think ChatGPT definitely changed my vacation. <laughs> Yeah, and Ronan, does it also uh, help you choose the distance which are closer to each other? Like if you go in the afternoon, the places that ChatGPT is recommending are closer to each other, so you can cover it at once in the same afternoon? Definitely, and you can actually go ahead and say, um, I will like to verify the distances oh, wow. between points are not more than X and the answer will change. So it's a real, oh. it's a real game changer. Um, yeah. and, and, um, and, and Ravi, I, I will say this, uh, my, my kids do the same across their homework at school as well. So it's, it's not just limited <laughs> to, uh, to, the, to the itinerary in, in Venice. Um, that's the power of Guinea, yes. Yes, but unfortunately when it comes to work, um, um, not all the sources like where to visit in Venice are as easily available as, so, as it is to, to build a trip. Um, so, so basically, if I take the same chat GPT that we just saw right now, and let's say that I work for a, a telco company or a retailer, and I want to I help, right? I want to help a customer that has a has a problem right now. Let's say that, uh, you know, at this time, like something is wrong with my modem, the internet is slow or not working or something like that. And um, I want to type a question, right? Like, which is Ronan's internet is slow and mm -hmm. um, Ronan's internet is slow. What can I do? Or maybe I'll do even not slow is not working, what can I do? And what you see in here is that basically ChatGPT is giving an answer and the answer is very, very well written. However, this answer is actually not grounded. The answer is a very generic answer. ChatGPT doesn't know that I'm on the Ravid show right now and uh, doing a live streaming. It actually cannot take into consideration many, many other items about the fact that I'm using an internet service from company X, that I'm basically have issues in, in my regions, etc. These things are basically not available um, uh, for, um, for the answer, right? Yes. Um, yes. So what you're getting is a generic answer only. Exactly. And this is something that k 2 view has basically solving and coming to help customers. So if they would like to have Gen AI technologies in general, we're using here ChatGPT as an example, really bring the value to, to the business. 
So let me try and basically show you a very, very quick glance at the demo. It's worth a longer demo, and we'd we'll love to share it with the audience in more oh, time. Yeah. But let me do something very, very quickly. So let's say that you're a customer of, um, um, we just did a telco example, so let's do a telco example. Let's say that I'm a customer of a telco, like David Smith, for example. And mm -hmm. uh, I want to put the same problem as the problem that I just uh, uh, wrote here. Yep. Internet is not working. Um, what can I do? Um, and behind the scenes, Ravi, just so that the audience understand what we're seeing, behind the scene, it is the same LLM that is working. Yeah. Um, what you see here in the demo, and it's very impressive because you see it happening live in, um, in, in sub-seconds, you can see that even though it's the same LLM, the question is the same question, um, the answer is actually very, very different. Um, wow. Yes, it actually is calling out the fact that there are outstanding invoices and, and, um, and payments, and it's actually recommended for David to, uh, to pay, or it's recommending the agent to recommend to David to basically address the, the, the invoice issues. And it's also mm -hmm. calling out that there is an active service outage. So what you are seeing is basically the answer grounded with real-time information, real information from the backend systems about the status of the, of the payment or invoices and the status of the network. So this is very, very uh, different answer, different value grounded and really helping the customer address the problem. I, I'm going to take a little bit of a risk and I'm going to show what is happening behind the scenes, but I'm, yeah, again, yeah, I'm going to do it like in a, I'm going to do it only touching it very, very quickly. Basically what is happening behind the scenes is that K2 view is offering to the LLM to ask queries. Um, K2 view mm -hmm. is actually giving the LLM, um, it's giving the LLM a full schema of all the information that we know about the customer and the network. You can see the schema here and really encouraging the LLM that if the LLM needs more information, it can actually write a um, SQL statement and ask for more data. And this is exactly what the LLM is doing. The LLM is writing a query, asking about things like invoices and outages and so on and getting an answer. And if the answer is not sufficient, the LLM can write an additional query and get even more um, and get even more information. So suddenly, um, the LLM is basically enriched with the backend data of the enterprise and able to give a very valuable result. Instead of like, hey, restart the router, restarting the router is not going to pay the invoice payment problem. <laughs> it is also not going to solve the outage. Um, so now the answer is grounded with the, with reality. Yeah, I love it in terms of you know how in the back end the queries kind of start running and then it, it kind of helps them to uh, you know get a resolution which kind of makes a lot of sense. So it's just fantastic. Perfect. Um, Ravi, this is also the point that um, um, it is a it is an LLM based environment. You can ask any question, anything you want to try and ask the. Uh, I the would. LLM. Uh, yeah, I would like to actually ask. Uh, I was kind of wondering about because since it's uh, you know about the invoices, uh, I kind of felt that can we also ask uh, you know maybe around the uh, if it can actually summarize uh, the outstanding invoices and how I can pay. Maybe something on those lines would make it easier. So can you share more information on the outstanding invoices? Okay. Um, and um, what you're saying is that basically the LLM is communicating behind the scenes, getting more information uh, and look, look at that, right? Some open yeah. bill on the home internet, on the cable and satellite and streamlined services. So really you can get access to the relevant information and of course, having a very productive conversation um, with the LLM. This is game changer um, for sure, because it kind of gives you like everything in detail in respect to what you're working on, about your account, about the details, and that's fantastic. In K2, we powers it, which is fantastic. 
exactly. K to view is actually this critical bridge that actually that that bring in front of you the customer data. It really is empowering the LLM with the customer data so that it helps ground the answers, um, the answers with the with the relevant uh, with the relevant information. Mm. Um, uh, Ravi, Ravi, I really appreciate your you letting me squeeze the demo in here. I, I I was trying to really show the audience how things really work. The, the I, UI I is just it. a demo UI, but for every customer that is building a chatbot, the power of your backend data is there. It is very important for people to you know obviously for enterprise leaders this is like the missing piece and this is what they really you know uh, want to see as when they want to start a journey in Gen AI or into the RAG space. They want to see the real results where the customers kind of get the ease of, uh, you know, just typing in and getting all the details in front of them. And, you know, that it kind of saves time for not only just for the enterprise, uh, for the customer care, but for the customer itself, uh, because the things are so eased up for them. So uh, that's one big uh, missing piece that you kind of touched on. I'm kind of also uh, wanting to discuss a little about. So let's start at the top. When you talk about enterprise data, what are you exactly referring to? What does it look like um, just for our audience? Because I'm pretty sure it's like massive data that you're working with. So how do you ease up things and what exactly this enterprise data is? So enterprise data is really the the data that is powering the 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 work that is happening in the enterprise on a daily basis. To be a little mm -hmm. bit more specific, this is basically the information that is inside um, the CRM, the Customer Relationship uh, and Management System. It is the information inside the ERP about the products and uh, and so on, right? So if CRMs are um, you know, Salesforce is a good example, an ERP, it's SAP and Oracle and ServiceNow. It is um, information from your customer service applications. There's also information that is just residing inside databases. Like, you know, we saw the outages. This is actually being logged by an operational system. So yep. this is uh, an, another part of the, of the information. It can include uh, information like uh, billing information and payment information. Um, this is information that typically is locked in a uh, in few tens of applications that are critical for the organization. Um, this is uh, mm. basically the information that in my 25 years that uh, we have integrated into the data warehouse, we have integrated it into data marts and so on for the purposes of analytics. Now we're basically bringing it to empower or to power the LLM answers. Mm. And uh, the, the fantastic insights on in that you kind of shared in uh... I've always heard, uh, you know, not only just from the enterprise leaders, but from, you know, a lot of vendors as well, that it is difficult for the enterprise data to, you know, uh, get solutions like chatbot or, you know, things like that. Uh, so what's your opinion about that? Why is it so hard to use enterprise data for LLM based solutions like a chatbot or uh, for something else? Any thoughts around that? Ronnie? Yeah, so integration was never easy, but integration of data into uh, into Gen, Gen AI technologies, LLM, chatbot that are powered by LLM, actually brings some some new challenges or new versions of the of the challenges. Let me highlight mm -hmm. uh, just a, a few of them. Um, mm -hmm. The first the first one, which is very very obvious, is that the data is fragmented across many many sources. There. Um, in, in, a, in a typical enterprise, as I already mentioned, um, it's, it's probably 20, 30 uh, different applications that have in total the knowledge that, that is required. But more right. than that, once you shifted to, uh, to the LLM-based world, part of the value you are bringing is that you're allowing anybody to ask any question and really ask the question now and expect the answer now, right? So. Anybody can ask any question and expect the answer now. This is actually putting a whole new set of pressure on the system. So scalability mm -hmm. and, and performance. Anybody asking any questions means a lot, of a lot of parallel queries running, right? So you have to be able to deal with scale 
in a different level. Um, anybody is asking any question, it means that the uh, people with less knowledge are asking the questions. So data quality and consistency and grounding of the answer is really, really critical. True. Profit, you and I are having this fluent conversation. The expectation from an LLM is to have a fluent conversation. So exactly. latency is really unacceptable, right? Like you want real time <laughs> answers, just like the conversation you and I are having right now. Exactly. Um, it also, and I think for some people, it's almost the, the top uh, the top requirement is that there is actually governance and compliance and really implemented security. Because the fact that anybody can ask any question is also putting a whole new set of risks around this. So I would definitely say, um, scalability to a new level, um, grounding of the data, data quality and consistency, real time and lower latency, governance and compliance, and data security. And this is, and to this level, it's something that all data management, all the integration platforms are not able to rise to to the challenge. An organization really need to find a way to address it in order to get the full value of their LLM potential. Yeah, no, I think uh, those are fantastic pillars. I would say that you've kind of mentioned about when it comes to, you know, how difficult it is, but then those are the few things that, those are the few pillars I would say people need to keep in mind when you're kind of, you know, obviously uh, looking at uh, enterprise data for, you know, solutions like chatbot or other things as well uh, when you're working in the GMA space. And, uh even in my experience i've spoken to so many leaders like yourself Ron, and i always hear something you know gen ai is fantastic people love it but then again it goes back to you know these types of pillars like data quality you mentioned you mentioned about consistency you mentioned about real-time access no there's no chance anyone likes the latency right and obviously data governance which kind of plays in a very important role but uh oh another big thing that you mentioned was about uh data security and privacy and that's what i'm kind of also is my follow-up question is about what about security how do you look at that uh, when it comes to you know gen ai how do you kind of manage with that because that's one important piece as well so kind of curious to learn yes. from you more. yeah so, so right it's actually uh, not a surprise that it's coming in this conversation i'll be very open um I, I hear it a lot in every conversation. The question of security and security and privacy really right. comes up as a major challenge and really a major concern that in, even in some organizations is, is limiting how fast they're adopting uh, Gen mm -hmm. AI. Um, and, it, and it's actually the, the whole concept of, uh, um, of, of LLM and even when you're adding uh, um, retrieval augmentation into the LLM is about proximity of the data and actually bringing the right data in the um, the right data into the sentence uh, in in the most relevant time. Putting actually uh, um, security and privacy over that is a major issue. Imagine that you're mm -hmm. asking a question and is the answer you're getting somebody else's uh, credit card information, or you're getting visibility to somebody else's. Uh, um, contract and business terms, right? Like these are big no's to every organization. And it's actually is a major, major uh, risk. This is why inside LLM, there is a massive effort. Uh, sometimes it falls under the name of guardrails that are coming mm -hmm. to basically ensure that the information that is coming is really not including sensitive information. It really is, um, guarded into and to be only the one that is allowed to share with the customer. This is where I sometimes have the opportunity to explain to the customer, like in the demo that we saw earlier, mm -hmm. that K2View is really enabling only the one customer data to be connected into the LLM. So there is, right. it's not just about security and guardrails, it's really about full isolation when only the relevant information is available for the LLM and the relevant information is masked so, the, and so that information that is sensitive is not available to the LLM from the get-go. So if somebody is concerned about the fact that you can convince the LLM to share more information, you can convince the LLM uh, to run around some limitation, that's why you need very strong guardrails, 
we actually believe that the guard that the guardrail starts with isolating the information that is available for the LLM. And that's yeah. why in the demo that I showed you, the minute that uh, that I chose that I chose David as the customer, the only data that became available for the LLM was the data from David, the service yeah, right. that David is using, and all mm -hmm. the sensitive information has been masked. Um, yeah. So um, um, I think really security and privacy is at the core. Building the right the right guardrails is critical, and I'm recommending to anybody looking into that guardrail the information that is available from the get-go do not just guard the answer because figuring out how the answer was achieved what was part of the llm uh, uh, process is is not not easy and in most cases not even possible yeah so it's very important to you know obviously keep uh the data secure but at the same time focus on this guardian privacy or areas as well and uh thanks for sharing about guardrails in those topics it, it is something which is pretty interesting for me but i'm kind of also curious now uh i know there are a lot of questions that i have run but these are you know something uh, kind of connected to each other which is also around how organizations trying to use enterprise data for gen ai today because i'm pretty sure there are various industries are uh, using data in different ways so kind of curious to learn more about or maybe in the gen ai it's like one uniform way how everyone kind of uses it so kind of curious to learn more about that as well Ron. yes so, so basically um uh, to um as, 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 as you and i already achieved in this conversation the backend data the information from the enterprise system is really really critical so you can't achieve really the value of the LLM without connecting for many, many use cases with this, with the backend data. Um, so this is where uh, I've seen talking to customers, I've seen them taking mainly two approaches. The first one is they're basically writing um, um, functions and these functions goal is basically to go against, to, to basically run a query to an API or directly to a backend system. And these functions are connected into a term called agents. And the agents kind of control the flow and the steps, including putting guardrails and other things around the information right. that was received from the backend data. Um, I would say that in general, especially for people like me that have, uh, um, that have enough gray hair of uh, the integration problem, starting to create many functions that go against many backend system is what we use um, uh, we used to call the integration hairball. This is basically means that anywhere you're hitting the backend system in a in an uncontrolled way, putting at risk operational systems that cannot necessarily answer the load. It also actually is putting a huge pressure on uh, and on security and privacy because once you're entering that mm -hmm. system with a query, the answer that you're getting is actually not controlled. Um, but some of the organization that I've seen, they actually started to feel the hairball from the from the sense of maintenance. Whenever a backend system is changing, you need to change all the functions that are somewhere calling to that system to make sure it's up to date. Um, so I, I think more and more organization, especially as they start to put more than the first function, they're saying like, hey, this is not the right approach. So mm. Some of them are actually looking into the second option, which is why wouldn't I actually ask the, my data warehouse or my data lake or my lake house? Why wouldn't I ask the lake yeah. house this question? And the data warehouse or the data lake, they have a lot of information from many of the backend systems. So it sounds like a, a good approach. The main challenge that you have is that the data warehouse and the data lake actually are lacking fresh information. This is information mm -hmm. that is brought into the lake and then extract, transform, and load the ETL process an hour ago, a day ago, two days ago. And the second problem that you have is this good data warehouse performance is running something in a few minutes or an hour. This is really a scale is coming here by parallel execution, but it is execution within minutes. So it is a bad fit. It's not a good fit for conversational interfaces. The, I want to raise two more challenges here. Yeah. Um, the okay. first one is running a query over a data warehouse with information of millions of customers and millions of invoices is not only taking you a long time, it is also very costly. Compute mm. cost and other costs are starting to ramp up. Exactly. And this is also where 
you, you're opening yourself to a major security risk. You're running a query against a data warehouse where all the information of all the customers is available. So it mm -hmm. is requiring you to invest very heav heav heavily in guardrails and other things. So data warehouse is expensive. It has security challenges. It is actually does not have the fresh information and it also not a good conversational interface. So that actually is pushing the customers to looking into, into an alternative. And this is where um, I think K2View is really changing the way customer can interact with enterprise data and really solving this problem. Yeah, I love those points in uh, how you kind of put together uh, that's a lot of information, but very critical information that you mentioned about Ronin. So thanks for that. Uh, also quickly, I know we are almost time. I wanted to know a little about, uh, can you tell me more about the current projects you're working on? Uh, can we know a little bit inside uh, what's happening at K2View? What are you working on? And uh, what can the audience expect in the next three to six months or maybe a year? Um, yes, so um, I, I think if I look into what uh, what we are working with customers today is really about um, improving the customer experience working with the enterprise. It can be mm -hmm. in a support side, it can be in the sell side, it can be in the way they partner with the organization. And we do it in two ways. One is really directly empowering the customer to ask the enterprise questions. Um, yeah. How would I, uh, how would I use this service? Um, why is my service not working? How can I get a better performance, better cost? Why did my bill change, and so and so on? Exactly. Um, the other one is in some organization they are concerned about letting the customer talk directly to the data, so they're actually doing it through agents. So basically, their own people instead of um, using many, many screens with a lot of data points, they're basically leveraging the LLM to help them. From the first second, the LLM can summarize the customer situation with the latest oh. problem and communication, right? So the minute yeah. that I'm going on the call, I already know everything that happened between the customer and the organization across the entire business. Then when the customer is asking questions, I can automatically get the relevant information pop up and even pop up in a summarized way um, and just like you and I in the short demo, we're asking, able to ask more and more questions. This is really empowering the agent productivity and the quality of the conversation way, way higher. Um, to your second part of the question, which is what K2View is working on, um, K2View beyond supporting these customers in going live and really get the full value, we're working on a few very, very exciting areas. How you're actually able to combine um, documents and unstructured data with structured data in the most efficient way so that you can ask more sophisticated question is an mm -hmm. area that we're innovating a lot. Um, yeah. Another one is how can you bring value um, into the, the chat communication in a fast way? Can, that be, can we show the value in the first hour working with K2View? A lot of exciting work done, done there. Um, and, and last but very, very important, we're helping our customer really quantify the value that they're getting from the LLM and from the power of enterprise data inside the LLM. So really validating the value and helping the LLM get more value is another area of, of great innovation. It is a very, very exciting time to be in the technology and the data side. And I'm really proud of the K2View team for really leading the chart in how to get enterprise data um, to bring LLM uh, value. We are loving it, uh, Ronin, and uh, the work that you guys are doing is fantastic. And definitely, uh, this is great information. I can't wait for the current project to go live. And what you're working on, uh, I'm pretty sure, is huge uh, for not only just your customers, but also those who would like to, you know, get into this space. Uh, you are doing some pretty good uh, stuff. But uh, I would love to thank you. Obviously, I can keep the conversation going and it couldn't get over because you have such great insights. But uh, I know K2V will be at different places. I'll uh, mostly meet you at uh, AWS reInvent next. So we'll chat more about different things and we'll have more updates for our audience. One last question I would like to ask uh, for our audience is, 
uh, if they want to reach out to you, if they want to learn more about K2 View, uh, where can they do it? Is LinkedIn a good place or email or somewhere else? Um, so definitely LinkedIn is a good place. Uh, Ronan Schwartz on LinkedIn, it's very easy to find. Ronan.Schwartz at k2view.com is another very easy way to uh, to find me. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can get the spelling, uh, the spelling right. But uh, today, like any other modern company, just going into uh, k2view.com and there is a chatbot and you can actually ask for me to, uh, to reach or the team to reach back uh, to you. Uh, I'm really looking forward, uh, Ravi, to seeing you again, and uh, I, I encourage the audience to continue the, the the communication and to get as much value of LLM. It is there is a lot that we can do. Yeah, I loved it, uh, and thanks for sharing all the great insights once again. Thanks, Ronin, for uh, visiting the Ravi show. Looking forward to meeting you, and thanks to our audience for uh, staying with us, asking questions to Ronin. Such a pleasure. Go connect with Ronin. Check out the K2V website and learn more about the amazing and the interesting things that they're doing in Gen AI and data space. Thanks, Ronin. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you.